Jackson, who will shortly, there he is, um, be on camera. We go live every Wednesday at 10 o'clock Mountain Time, and we take junk and turn it into home decor that we either put in our house or sell at our retail store, which is Jamie Ray Vintage. And our website is jamierayvintagehome.com. And then we have a little boutique in Lehigh, Utah. Today's junk craft is brought to you by CNC Scraps. Tell what CNC <laughs> Scraps are, Seth. So CNC is what I use to cut out a lot of corbels now for the website. Uh, computer numeric controller is essentially what that is. And it program it and it tells the, the router bit where to go and it cuts these out just how I program it. But every now and then, it has a snafu or the thickness of the MDF or the wood isn't just quite right. And you can see it didn't cut all the way through. And so we've got like this fun feathery thing and it doesn't look very good when you glue it up for the finished project. It gets, gets like rough edges and it's a lot of sanding. So we put this in a scrap pile. Um, this one here got really thin instead of being this thickness, you can see the difference there. So well, And we also have the opposite sides of things that print out. And so this morning we had zero ideas for Waste Not Wednesday and part of the premise of Waste Not Wednesday is we take stuff that we didn't pay for and turn it into something that gives us money. And I was looking at these sitting on Zeb's bench and I was like, you know what, if I put two and two together that looks exactly like a pediment. Which people love these for putting on tops of shelves or hanging up on the wall in like a gallery frame or you could even add it to a piece of furniture. And so I was like, hey, Zeb, do you think you could connect these? Tell them how you connected them. So I, I knew I'd been saving these for a good reason. I just hate throwing stuff away. <laughs> and they're cut out so cool. I'm like, I, you know, it just took Jamie wandering into the garage this morning and seeing my pile of scraps, essentially, and being like, hey, what are those? <laughs> well, and we're supposed to be moving in a few months when the farmhouse is done. So we've got to get through all the projects. Plus, tomorrow is a stay-at-home shopping network. So we've got to amp up all of our things for one of a kind. So Zeb used his nail gun and glue. So I glued them in the center. I just took two of these. They look like this. This is just the leftover scraps. What corbels are these? So these are the Mariah's, I believe. Do we even still make those? Yeah, they're on okay, the website. So if you go to jamierayvintage.com, we sell Mariah's, which eventually we'll get them on the home website. And these are just the scraps from it. So it, if you guys do wood projects with cool looking scraps, Think of how you can put them together to make decor. The Mariahs look like this. Okay, there you there, go. There's the three pieces together as, as part of a corbel. That's what the Mariah corbels look like. But you take the pieces apart, and so what I did is I just glued down the center, and I took my little 18-gauge nailer, and I just toenailed these in, which meaning toenail like at an I angle think. from each side. And they're pretty sturdy. The glue's not even dry yet, and I think they're going to hold up really well. Well, and you could also put them this direction. This would be really cute because this could sit on the top of a shelf. Um, you'd probably, if you do it like this, would have to put something on the back to hold it up. Mm -hmm. But these are really cute. But I wanted them to look like pediments, which is why we attach them that way. And a pediment is a decorative detail at the top of a door, like in old houses, or on the top of an armoire or whatever. And they're super trending and really hard to find. So we're going to get started on how we're going to transform these pieces of scrap. We gotta paint them first. This, what part is this from? So this is from a different corbel and I can't even remember. I So this is the prototype. This was gonna be the center of it. Oh, and, and then you and added that, the And then I scallops. added the scallops, you can see there. It was gonna be the center and then I added the scallops to it because I liked, I wanted it to be a little fancier. Now, if you don't have a CNC machine and you wanna create something similar, draw out a pattern on cardboard Put it down on your scrap wood and just simply get your jigsaw out and you can create similar items that you can make look just like pediments that you can use to hang on the wall or put on the top of furniture and i think if you're not getting kind of the idea by the time the end of this episode is over you'll understand what the vibe is going to be so the first things first we're going to have to add some details so we're going to bust out the iod molds and the paper clay and we're going to pick out some detail to put on the middle and then while I do that, do you want to get the uh, salt wash mixed up? Yep. So there's all kinds of cool IOD molds here. They've got some, the new ones are awesome. So many options. And you can pick up, so I know this is super confusing, but anytime we're using a DIY product like molds or paint or salt wash, we carry all that on our crafting DIY website, which is the jamierayvintage.com that you all know. And then if you ever want things like the sweater I'm wearing or the necklace or these when they're complete, 
they'll be on JanuaryVintageHome.com. So we have the two websites. We just separated them because we don't, we have two different companies with different shipping teams because it gets a little bit crazy and you don't really want to ship paint with clothing. It's a catastrophe. So, all right, what kind of CNC do we use? We use a Laguna CNC and Zeb has it in the garage. It's, uh, it's not inexpensive. We spent about $11,000 on the machine and the software. There are less expensive machines in the few thousand dollar range, um, but we use it quite a bit. And so we went with, um, we went with the more expensive machine. And since we've had it, it's paid for itself because it makes all of Zeb's corbel designs and someday candlesticks when he figures out the fourth access. We can also do word cutouts. We cut out little houses. There's all kinds of fun stuff we can do. Sharia says, cool, I would love to get one. Yeah, they're a great investment and you really can make more money. I'm not really sure where Zeb went because it's just me this morning right now. I need some cornstarch, Zeb, did you? All right. My problem is I can never remember. I think this is classic elements on the mold. I don't know which one I want to use. Let's see. I'm trying to make this look like a piece of architectural salvage. The fleur de lis would be cool. If I was going coastal, I could use the mermaid. And what these are are silicone um, molds. You can actually they're actually um, food safe. So once they have clay in them, obviously you wouldn't want to use them for food. But if you're not a crafter in this way, but you like to cook, you can use these molds to mold your pie crust. People have put chocolates in them. They're oven safe to a certain temperature. Caitlin could probably tell you. Um, I'm trying to figure out which designs I want to put in. We Sorry, also have butterflies. I had to wash some brushes. Yeah, I was like, where did you go? I had to wash some brushes. Where's the cornstarch so I can brush these? Um, it was in there. No, it's got to be on the shelf over there. Even if you can find the baking soda, that would be helpful. Because right. I want to use. Is this classic element sub? I believe it is. Um, I think it's is is it tapered or is it regular? Like the the beaded one. It's the beaded one. Is it all just one size or does it taper down? It's all one size. Then it's classic elements. Classic elements two has one that tapers. Oh, okay. So this is classic elements. Okay, good to know. Somebody said my hair was getting long. I actually just got it cut. I just normally wear it up so people can't see it. But since I finally cut it, I decided I could leave it down today. They're starting to lift restrictions. So lashes done, hair cut, life's good. All right, did you find the baking soda? You should use cornstarch in these, but that, that, that's fine. You can bring that here. Okay, let's get on with The people crafting. of YouTube are waiting to actually see something. So. I want to see some crafting happen. Yeah. So, Normally you would use cornstarch because it works a little better, oh, you got but you all. want, you can pick whichever one. You can dust, where's the salt wash? That's what you're supposed to be getting. I know, I had to, I had to clean some things because I went in there and I thought you had told the kid to wash all those brushes and they're all just sitting I in did. water. I did, maybe okay. we'll get Eliza to wash those brushes today. Wednesdays are always tough because nobody's been in the shop that's working at the shop except for shipping. So our brushes sometimes are a hot mess. So I'm just dusting this with baking soda. That way my clay doesn't stick. And I'm going to take this clay here and I'm gonna put it down in the mold. Can you not find the salt wash? Nope. Did we oh. use it all? No, I don't think so. So this is IOD paper clay. It's almost like Play-Doh. And I kind of like to warm it up a little bit in my hands, make it pliable. And then I push it down in my mold. You wanna keep it in a bag while you're using it so it doesn't dry out. If it ever does get a little dry, you can put like a baby wipe or a damp paper towel and that'll sometimes moisten it up. So you just push this down into the mold and there's like a little rim on the edge of the mold. And when you push against it, it kind of cuts off the clay, which is great. So you get a nice clean impression. Sometimes people use something to like push against it. I always just use my finger. Zab's actually a little better at molding than I am. No way. You're, yeah. you're really good at it. Maybe it's just because my... I always forget to, like, cornstarch the mold. Oh, yeah. Well, this one's kind of shallow. You don't have to have cornstarch, but if it's very detailed and it's shallow, the cornstarch is really... What color helps. do we want our salt wash to be? Um, let's go with a darker color. Maybe, like, anything dark over there. What do we got? Black we got... velvet or... that Black velvet's the darkest color we have. I think that's a little harsh. Do we have Black any velvet. old school? Is, um, Can you check on the... Not over here. I'll, I'll be right back. Sorry. And I'm going to straighten the camera. Okay. It's okay. We're we using were, classic elements. We were ready until we weren't. 
Well, we I had to, my employees came in and I had to let them know which items to tag because we're open today. And I put up all those new clothes if you guys watched our shop tour. But what I didn't get done was putting prices on them. Prices are kind of important if you want to sell stuff. So I had to get that going. All right, so this is in here. And let's just make sure I don't have any questions. Stacy says put a bird on it. I guess we'll have to put a bird on one. <laughs> we talked about that. Uh, put a bird on it. Okay, so I've got a scoop of the salt wash in here and I am just going to eyeball this because it's not even hardly enough to get up on the measuring. Did you bring marks. the glue over? The glue. I'm gonna go get the glue. Oh, the to attach construction the adhesive. Yes. You know, the 18 things we need to have that we forgot we needed to have out Is on this the floor all here. The construction adhesive we have left? Yeah, we've ran, we've been running through it. I'll get some more next time I go. So we go through a lot of construction adhesive because this works for like everything. And this you can buy at your local hardware store. This is not traditional Gorilla Glue, not the kind that expands. You have to have it in a caulking gun, or you can buy the little tubes, but it's much cheaper if you buy it like this. And because we use this so much for metal, wood, IOD molds, we just buy it this way because it's a lot less expensive. All right, so you want this to be the consistency of like frosting, and that is more the consistency of like drying out clay or mud. Yeah. Well, if you read the directions and you mix it up, it's just e two parts paint to one part salt wash. Or you just... I thought it was one to one. It's one to one. No, it's two to one. It's Isn't one. it? I think it's one to one. No. It's on there. It's one to one. Um, oh yeah, you're right. I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't say that very often, so... It's okay. I need to smear out my glue. Usually I just use my finger, but I don't really want a sticky finger all day. So. Still too thick. It's too thick. Did you not measure it? You just. I no. I haven't been measuring the paint because I don't have. I don't want to get my salt wash measurer all painted. <laughs> all right. So, well, if you use the little ratios on here, that's what I do. Well, I couldn't. I didn't have enough to even get to the bottom it's line. It's okay. So I'm just smearing out the glue. You want to make sure that there's enough glue on the edge to where the edges really go down. You could also use resin. We carry the Lumalite casting resin on the website. The thing with that is that it does dry harder faster. This will take a few hours, but you have to let it sit in the mold. So if you're doing a lot of molds, I feel like clay is better because you just make it and pop it out. So I'm just gonna, the nice thing is I know exactly where center is. And if you have any, oops, I said I wasn't gonna touch it and then I just touched it. You touched it. I just, you need a rag to wipe that No, off. I need like a, this. I'm getting off the extra glue because I went all the way to the edge. Zeb never puts it all the way to the edge and I inevitably have to come back and touch it up. I leave it so you can stuff the paint up underneath. This is true, but the problem with the way I do it is that then you get extra glue that pooches out and that's not attractive. So. Well, you leave way too much glue on there. Well, I want it to really be attached. Be careful when you're mushing this down. You don't want to push too hard because it's still clay so you're going to mush out the details okay so that's about what i want if i left it like this it would actually slide off caitlin dropped the link for salt wash on there we've been shipping out so you know, much salt some, wash. some people don't like the look it does give like a really old world kind of been outside crusty look if you if you're going for that and we almost always are going for that and we, we're loving it so if you don't like the look don't do this salt wash step. You can step this step, and but then can, it's, this also is going to like hide some of the It's going to hide the seam. the seam here where I hit a nail wrong, you know. It's going to make it look old and crusty, and we're trying to make architectural salvage. We're trying to make it look like it came off an old building or an old piece of furniture or whatever. So the crustier, the better in that case. So I'm just using this little beaded detail, and I'm going to put a beaded detail. Show them close. I don't know that they can see that. I yet. will. I showed them close earlier. Oh, okay. I'm going to put a bead of detail all the way down. Now, I didn't put the baking soda in it. Break so not stick in it? I did because I am that good of a ninja. <laughs> good right thing. on camera. I just broke that thing. Good thing they're, they come in a pack of 10 for like a dollar nine. That one was already used. I think I'm free at the. All right. It has you, a ruler on it. Do you, did I break a ruler? Yeah, it has. They have rulers <coughs> on them. Oh, oops. I thought it was a paint. All right, I'm ready to salt wash. Are you ready? No. Okay, should I give a base coat plus salt wash on that? Oh, I should have totally, I should have dusted that. 
Oh yeah, that little one. Oh, it's because it was two separate pieces. Oh, you didn't get it mushed together good? It's fine. All right, I'm gonna hit this with a little mermaid felt just for some added color when we distress. All right, so this is just the beaded detail. I'm gonna put that along the bottom, but this part is gonna be hard because this is a big fatty glue gun and I just need a little tiny bit of glue. Good luck, Jamie. Maybe this is where the smaller glue container would be handy. I'm just adding a little detail on the bottom here. There's a little part that broke off. If you do it like this and you paint it while it's still drying, it will crack and you might have to come back and backfill it. Usually when it cracks, I don't backfill it. I just throw in some decorative wax, like white wax, and the crack is part of the charm. It's like a little like caterpillar. There we go. So I'm just gonna do that all the way across the bottom. Okay, so I just threw a little uh, mermaid tail on there for coloration. That's not gonna be the final color. We'll get more. And I, I didn't wash my brush out good and there was some white swan in it still. You can see where the white swan just kind of blended in. We're running with that. So Brianna says, I have an architectural top piece to a hunch. I'm gonna do this now. Sweet. Yeah, if you have this? like leftover furniture pieces or or you've, you've uh, basically deconstructed something and that's what's left, like these are perfect for that those kind of scraps. Zep and I are not super good at keeping our clay moist. Some of this clay has been left out. Well, we leave it in a Ziploc and we should probably triple Ziploc it because while they claim to be airtight, I feel like some air leaks in. Well, these are the Ikea ones. These are not the freezer ones. Maybe we should get the freezer ones because those are more airtight. Yeah. Okay. But that would require actually going to a store. Or we could use our clay up faster. Mm, yeah, that's true. Well, we might today because I have all these to do. So yeah. if you buy your clay fresh, it's not quite as difficult to work with. Ours is being being a problem child here. It's a, it's been open a while. It's at the end of its uh, its life here. Use a freezer bag. And when I say open a while, Probably we opened a bag, months. misplaced it, found it, but it already opened another bag. And so this could be a couple months old. It could be a year old. I don't know. I don't like to waste stuff though. I will Are make you it doing work. all across the bottom? Yeah, you can oh, do I'm another gonna, design. I'm going to be a minute. I better do some designs. I'm over you here. Got, right here, use that one or something. Or oh. you want to put a bird on it? Put a bird on it. Definitely use freezer bags and double Donna says from Crescent Moon Cottage. Yeah, do as we say, not as we do. That's pretty much the rule of thumb when it comes to DIY. We also show you that even if you don't do it right, you can still make it work. Although look at that, it's like coming apart. It's all right. Every time we use this glue, I forget to like make it stop coming out. And then there's yeah, like- you have to pull the trigger and then it gets all over. There's pooches of glue all over the table. And then I go to do something else and I'm like, why is that sticky? Okay. I do the same thing with uh, my brown sugar. I always forget to close it up or put it in there. So I always have to put like a piece of bread to moisten up my brown sugar. Really, I don't take care of a lot of things well. Like I'm creative, I'm not organized. Okay. I think I'm gonna build a whole centerpiece for this one here. I read a sign once that said, creative minds are rarely tidy. And I was like, that is me to a T. Okay. Almost there, Zeb. Almost there. You're almost ready for salt wash? You got hey, like... did you know they make one of the caulking guns that stops automatically? It's $10 and well worth it. Sweet. You're going to need to look for that. I don't I'll have know. to find one for you. I, I I, I've used caulk guns enough that I like it's like automatic for me when I'm using one to like let the pressure off, but well, Zeb goes I'll find to, one for Jamie. Zeb goes to Home Depot and all the stores for me now because I'm not a fan of the mask situation, so I just try to go into stores as little as possible. It's not but, that she doesn't want to wear a mask, she gets all claustrophobic. Yeah, well, and if you don't go to us inside, then it doesn't matter, right? Right. You just stay in the back. I actually have in the shop, we have some face shields. So I'm going to try that out today if I have to go to the front of the shop. And I'm also really good at shopping online. That's how I do all my wholesale shopping these days. That's how I get my retail therapy. I buy stuff for the website. There's a bunch of new clothes coming in today. 
We right. might have to open some more clay. How is our clay supply? Oh, we have plenty of clay. Okay. Don't have any brayers, but we got clay. That's the nice thing about, well, not the nice thing, the, the bad thing about the current situation is supply chains are all kind of cattywampus. Okay. Question, wanted to buy some different paints for your website, but the, the shipping is high. Do you have options for international shipping? Nope. That's how much it costs. Unfortunately, we, we have to reflect that shipping cost back to you. And that's, that's what they're charging us. That is how much it costs to ship internationally. And actually sometimes, more times than not, it actually costs more than we charge. The website doesn't charge quite enough. So we try to adjust it to get as close as possible. See if we can get this out of here. I'm doing good without having to. The clay that's inside the little package is newer than the yep. random balls of clay outside. The, the package. random balls of clay could be. I mean, those are those are old, old. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm going on the side here. <clears throat> to, to get an idea of what we're talking about, we just have crumpled up excess clay and thrown it in there, <laughs> and some of these are kind of dried out and hard. <laughs> there are other options if you don't do well with masks so i will let you know how my face shields go i just had a local guy who has a 3d printer make me some i don't love the little piece in front of it because it's not very rigid but we have some of those iod the old mounts that don't have the grid system on them so i thought i might repurpose that so i'm going to work with it today that's what i'm doing after the live I'm one of those people I just like keep messing with it till I figure out what works. My dad calls me a hacker. I don't know if that's what that is. Like I just make stuff do. Oh, Banda says she wore a face shield and it's doing good. Thanks. It gives me hope. All right, let's see. This would be cool as a standing sign base. Yeah. That would be cool. I think we have somebody either picking up an order or somebody waiting for us to open. I'm going to go get more clay because you really burned through that. Sorry. I right. needed this beaded detail on the bottom and I'm using a lot. Well, we have like a fifth of a package in here, so not very much clay. Is there a building that's tall enough to ship? Zeb, you left the door open. Jean and her daughter Camry are here shipping, and my daughter Eliza is here, so it's kind of noisy in the back. Shipping cannot be combined because we have two separate websites and hundreds of orders, so anytime we try to combine shipping, it does not work. And we want to make sure everybody gets the right stuff. So this is what the air dry clay looks like when you get it, and it's nice and soft. But clothes are free shipping. So if you buy clothes, it's not like it costs you any extra to ship them. You can buy all the all clothes and shoes on the website are free shipping. So really it's the same same if you buy them on the different websites. I did it that way because the way we have the website set up is made for shipping bigger things. And so when it was calculating the, the shipping for the clothes, it was just ridiculous. And shipping for clothes is just not that expensive because they're lightweight. So again, I made the system work, even though it didn't want to work the way I so wanted So I'm, I'm using, the, I think this is trimmings too, I think. Okay. It might not be, I could be wrong, but I'm kind of doing a leafy type design here. So I just need like a little edge here to finish this off on both sides. Okay. And now I have completely glued my finger. <laughs> So it's going to stick to everything for the duration. I'll just, now that I already have glue on my finger, I'm just going to steal it off the table. Waste not, want not. We get asked all the time if this tablecloth, if this is like a drop cloth. No, it's our tablecloth. This is our project table. All right, I'm just going to pinch that off and mush these together a little bit so it doesn't look so segmented. 
Will you be getting more cement molds? Yes. Not this week. They were supposed to. We we uh, we didn't get them ordered soon enough, so they're not going to be. They'll probably be here like Friday or Saturday. And the small ones they no longer carry, so the next size up is medium. So we'll have them for next week. We do have a couple in that I need to do inventory and check on, so we might have a few new ones tomorrow, but we'll have more the next week. I don't know if you guys, if any of you guys deal with shipping or logistics right now, you would not envy me. Tomorrow's stay at home shopping anything. network will probably be mostly found items or stuff that I make or Jamie makes. Yeah, it's going to be a unique stay at home shopping network because we got to come up with stuff. All right, so I got my powder in. If you have trouble getting them out, you can roll them out. You just push them upside down like this and roll it. Can you guys see that? I think so. But they come out pretty easy. I don't I don't need to do that. I was just showing you. Oh my gosh. Almost done. So close yet so far. Don't freak out if your molding is not perfect because Caitlin says it, classic elements is back in stock. What? I didn't even know that and I used it? I must have like sensed it when I picked this mold up this morning because this one's been out of stock forever. So if you want classic elements and you've been waiting, Caitlin says they're back in stock. That makes me so happy. Oh, you know, that might be why we're out of glue because half of it's on the table. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I just need like two little beads. Okay. Fill in the hole. Hold on. <laughs> My fingers are sticking to everything. So to release pressure, just push that and All you're right. done. I'm going to use this end of the... Because you see how it was starting to come out? It builds pressure up and just keeps shooting. I'm gonna smush this together so that way it looks correct. All right, I think the are black you? gauchos, Donna, are sized a little bit small and they don't have a lot of give. So I normally wear a medium, I have to wear a large, and I better not have eaten ice cream. So hopefully that gives you a good idea on the sizing on the gauchos. And they, some, well, I try to buy fabrics with a lot of give, but these are like more formal style pants so they're not they're not the stretchy pants the leggings that we carry are stretchy pants and they are soft okay lisa says happy wednesday i'm 65 today happy, happy birthday, birthday lisa. lisa all right so this is my piece so far but i feel like it needs something on each side to kind of level it out so more clay did anybody have an amazing cinco de mayo yesterday our uh, our favorite taco place was, was so busy we couldn't even they wouldn't even answer the phone when we called because the do, line was really long and there were lots of people in the yeah. stop shop and I was like look they do takeout and we're like um so Jamie just made tacos I can make tacos it was good and Eliza made a fun fetty cake she said it looked like Cinco de Mayo we played also Cinco delicious. de Mayo music off of my phone I'm one of those people like they're lifting restrictions and people are out so now I'm like I'll stay in I'm good. <laughs> I'll wait a hot minute till the excitement is over. A lot of people think we live in like kind of a smaller area. Does that look weird, Bev? I feel like I need something bigger for my centerpiece. I made I made this one, but I think I think it's use a little one. small. Okay, I'll use that. That's good. I need to you come guys see what I'm talking that. about? So I made this to kind of put right here in the center, and it's a little small. I'm I think. go that way. All right. I know what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to do a bigger one. We'll, we'll save this for later. All right, you can have it in a second. I just have to mold one more of these. Cake and tacos. Yeah, it was good. And then I met up with some girlfriends. We went to a place that's called Swig. You can get, like, drinks. I actually just had milk because that's what I like to drink. They got sodas. And we sat six feet apart around just a few of my friends. There's, like, four of us around my friend's campfire outside. And we stayed out way too late. So they kept texting me, I'm coming home. I texted you once. I'm like, hey, that's a long drink run. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's all I said. I was home before midnight. <laughs> Barely. Almost, you I almost turned into a pumpkin. Yeah, this is true. I'm just going to use some of it off the table. My birthday is on Mother's Day. Well, happy early birthday, Joan. Like a double whammy Mother's Day and a birthday. Oh, Debbie had tamales takeout. I actually make tamales every Christmas Eve from scratch. Well, one year I bought them, but normally from scratch. They're actually not very hard to make. 
just have to not be super particular about the way they get folded. I don't know how those people that make a ton of them, like make them all neat and uniform. Mine are kind of wonky, but they taste good. Deb likes mine. Cause my masa has lots of yummy fat in it. I like tamales, dry. but I don't like dry food. So if they're on the dry side, I bark at them. Yeah, he barks at them. All right, I think this one's done. Okay, do you have some salt wash? I have lots of salt wash. It's probably getting dry over here. All right, where's my brush? Okay, I'm gonna show you the uh, design that I've come up with. There we go. I can't even see the whole thing. Oh, I actually kind of think, sorry, I thought it you was need, done. You need something up high, I think. Yep, I need something curvy. What have you got that's curvy? All right, Oops. I'm not gonna salt wash it. I will eventually paint this thing. But I, I need something, maybe this little swoopy here. Sure. Is that classic elements too? Here, go get more, there's some right there. Okay. There you go. Are you telling me what to do? Yes, Oh, I look am. at this little like flower thing. I'm gonna use that one, because I feel like those kind of mimic the bubble detail on the bottom. Let's see. Hey, you're works. encroaching. I'm encroaching? Am get I not? back over on your side. <laughs> get back on your side. It's kind of like when we're in bed and I'm tired and I'm like, dude, keep your knees to yourself. We had a queen size bed for a really, really long time. And it was way too small to be with a six foot husband. He always had his knees in my back. And after 10 years of marriage, we bought a king size and it was life changing. There we go. What do you guys think of that placement? I feel like that's, that's beautiful. I like that. I'm just going to leave it right there like that and paint it and salt wash it. I'm not going to do anything out on the edges. That's uh, understatedly elegant, Zeb. Oh, thank you. I like it. All right. Mine is maybe not understated. That's okay. Oops. I need that mold back. There's all Since the Since you're molds. better at it than me, would you glue these on? <laughs> Did you already hit these with some glue? What? No, they're not glued. Oh, yet. no wonder you wanted me to glue these. These are tiny. Yeah. I'm having trouble not mushing them. Well, good luck with that. I'll make the other two. We're tag team. I wasn't like you. I didn't just make three things. I made 452 things. I know. You went cr you went crazy. Well, it's like if you give a mouse a cookie, they want to drink a milk. That's kind of like me with molds. Like I put on one mold and think I'm going to be all delicate. And then I just have to add more to it looks good. Okay, so these are... I'm going to have to coerce it into going the right way. So the mold is all going one direction. What I did was I did, while the clay is still wet, I just bent it down so that it would follow that curve better. There we go. <laughs> Melody, not to start mold wars, but you have a lot of antique molds. We will have some, not this week, but the next week. We may have two tomorrow, and I'm going to put them up very last so that way it's even Stevens. I ordered some but they didn't ship them in time, and so I won't have them before tomorrow. So I've got to go through my inventory and see, Zeb has a few he was hoarding for himself that I'm just gonna list, and then we'll save some of the other ones. I didn't tell him we were gonna do that, but now he knows. So we actually have the one that we used on the video the other day. Since we've already used that one, I'm probably gonna list that one, and then I think I have one more. That was my, I was gonna experiment with that one. I'll have to clean it up. And the next set of molds we are gonna have are gonna be bigger, they're medium size, because this. I was talking to my picker and she said the only small ones they have left are dumb. <laughs> She's like, I won't give you those. So we gotta go up to the next big size. Okay, is that good? Yeah, but you're you somehow got off center. So it's throwing my my whole thing off. Alright, do you can I start salt washing this? Here. Yep, either one. Go ahead and uh... We're gonna need the heat gun out probably, so. Okay, I'll get the heat gun. The thing is I can't really salt wash the molded details. Because I'll totally mush them. That's okay. They, I, don't, I, I feel like we don't even need full coverage with the saw wash. Yeah, we'll just add some texture. So the salt wash is all natural, but you do need to be careful when you mix it that you're not like getting it up into your lungs because it is a powder. Same thing if you're using milk paint, all natural, but you don't want to inhale it. Yeah, just the powder. Once just it's powder. mixed, Once it's, up, mixed it's fine. It's fine. Okay, we're done with glue for a minute, right? Yes, we are. Oh, sorry if I missed it. Where's the refreshment center sign? That's going into our theater room at the farmhouse. We actually have two, so there's one for sale on the website on January Vintage Home. But we just haven't moved Sorry, that it's one. just been sitting here. I'm gonna, tease. Not I'm gonna tease you guys a little bit. This one's ours. <laughs> it's not intentionally there for here, marketing purposes. I'll, I'll flip just, it around. So we you haven't can. moved it. 
There, now the temptation's gone, just yeah. like that. Man. Well, wait, I think we still have one. But yeah, this is, we have a basement where the ceiling is really low in the farmhouse. And we were going to put my oldest boy there, but he's going off to college. Yeah, we were going to make it a bedroom for him. But now that he's gone, we decided we don't need seven bedrooms in that house. So we're going to make it a theater room. Yeah. And not the fancy kind where people spend lots of money. Like the kind where Zeb builds some risers and we use the couch we already have. <laughs> The couch we have is super comfy, so I'm gonna be all right with that. True story. Okay, that's good. You can put a, you can keep okay, on that. I'm gonna show them. Okay. All right, so random salt wash. This oh, these is... are thumb holes, yes. Somebody's like, what are those holes? This is actually on the website. It's a really lightweight little hoodie, which is perfect for spring, but it's got thumb holes, which aren't really conducive to crafting. So it's hard to see the texture because this little black dress is so dark, but there's lots of good texture. It no longer looks like smooth, brand new MDF. Crescent Moon Cottage wants me to do a clothes only. Maybe I'll do that on Facebook. We're actually going to be, this Thursday will be the last day at home shopping on YouTube. And then we're gonna move it over to Facebook and go back to having more edited videos. Yeah, people, we, are, people are getting back out and getting back to work. So we're gonna, we're not, we're gonna go back to doing like, uh, more more edited crafting videos and things yeah we'll still do it but it's going to be on facebook after this week because we haven't got the views that we were getting before so we usually use that as an indication that people want something else so we'll still do it we'll just you'll get extra videos so after this thursday you'll have to watch it on facebook if you want to see them so i'm just really lightly hitting the top of these molds that jamie made with the dark so that it's not so contrasty when we go to wet distress Contrasty, is that a word? Have I used DIY paints and pick them together? Um, yeah, we try to mix them to make a different color. They're both water-based, so you yeah. can mix them. Um, I don't know exactly what the outcome would be, if it chip or not, but it probably would make it so it didn't chip. We use it over the top of each other all the time. But any water-based paints can be mixed. Just know that whatever the properties of those paints are, it's kind of like when you mix a husband and wife, the children are a little bit of each. Same thing with paint. You'll get a little bit of the DIY properties and a little bit of the milk properties all in one paint. You'll be essentially creating a new species of paint. If paint were a species. If paint were a species, that would be what you're making. Okay, I'm going to texturize the molds a little bit, but I'm just barely pouncing it, okay? That's right. Uh, so I just went and dry brushed kind of on these ones. This will add some texture to it. Okay. Once it gets about halfway dry, you knock down the peaks. I'm gonna answer questions. I think we've got enough on here. Do you want me to- Disclaimer, as always, we're using the heat gun so that we can finish the project and show you what it looks like before we're no, we're no longer live. That heat gun is warm. We're at that time of the year where it's like chilly at night, chilly in the morning and warm during the day and I just never know what to wear. Last night we were all around the fire out in my friend's backyard with blankets on because it was chilly. So we didn't even use this one that I painted. <laughs> well, well, Jimmy's going to make a bunch and we'll probably... We'll do them for tomorrow. Well, if you want to see the finished product, product on all of these, make sure you're catching tomorrow's video, 4 o'clock mountain time. So Kaylin has commented, heat guns can make stuff bubble and crackle. Use at your own risk. You can also burn your paint, burn your piece. There's a yeah. lot of situations that a heat gun may cause. Okay. Do you want to paint like some of that or? Mm, no, I'm good there. You know what we should have done? We should have painted it black first, then put the molds on, then did the salt wash. So that's why I painted this one with the mermaid tail. You're very smart. We'll do that on the next one. Next time episode. around. It's fine. That way we get all three of the layers coming back through. Bye. So I just knocked the peaks down a little bit before it got too dry. Because you don't want them to be sharp. Alright, I'm going to find, are we going to do beadboard on the top? Do we even have a clean paintbrush? Um, or have you now used all of them? I used all the brushes. Here, just use this one and we'll get like some fun little hint of mermaid tail in there. It'll be alright. Hint of mermaid tail? Yep, hint of mermaid tail. Or, I just get most of it off. I'm going to show them this one and then I'm going to ship it over to you for paint. Oh, I forgot the top. Hang on. I'll, I'll heat gun it while I show them. Looks like a hot mess, right? Yeah, the black is salt wash. So there's salt wash and 
black velvet mixed together, and then I also use just black it's velvet. It's little black dress. Oh, little black dress, sorry. Yep. It's very dark. It's hard so, to see the texture, but once we add the light color on, it's going to pop so good. You can put salt wash in any paint, really. Yeah. Here, let me show you close. It's an we'll additive. Let's we'll see if we can have, show that texture coming through. Yep. All right, so it's looking like a mess, right? Always gets worse before it gets better. Can you see that texture on there? All right, do you have yeah. one you're ready for me to paint? Can this one's ready. On? Light hand. It's, it's not, still a little not, wet. Well, the salt wash is still a little damp. It's dry on the top, but it's I if you mush it, is, it'll mush. I feel like this is something that we probably also need to put like some decrepit dust in. Oh, yeah. I always have a light hand. People are like, you glop so much paint on, but it's like you can't push really hard. Kind of have to lay it on there and let it do its thing. It settles down pretty good for the most part. Before it dries, yeah. Once it, if you wait two hours, they'll dry completely and then you don't have an issue. But we don't have that kind of time. We could have, if I would have come up with this idea early, we could have pre done one. I had some pre put together. At least we weren't stapling on camera. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Can I show the molds we've used? Yeah, we used classic elements one and two. We use these molds. So the good news is we only use two molds instead of all of the molds. Sometimes I feel like we use too many products and people are like, I can't do all that. We just use two. Just if you don't have all these products, just use what you have, you know, get creative. Yeah. If you if you've got one mold, make it do what you want it to do. If you don't have salt wash, skip that step and just add lots of you can make the DIY paint textured by like uh, Debbie too. likes to freeze it and then she uses it or you can let it dry out a little bit and then put it on there it gets really nice and thick if you take the clay paint and you do this to it this is what I'm going to do on this because we didn't put that salt wash everywhere you'll get peaks they won't be as pronounced as the salt wash but then that kind of makes that texture look like it's all together do we have any comments this is complex I'll go back to the beginning yeah, it's we're. Hard. It's hard to mess up. We've had like three steps, but it's just taken a while because some of them are a little. Like doing the molds is a little more time consuming. That's the thing though about these live videos. It's kind of nice because you see the whole thing. Sometimes when you do an edited video and you edit something, you might edit out something we may think is small and insignificant, but then somebody else sees it and they're like, oh, I admit to, there's a step missing, you know? You also get to see us mess up and be like, oh, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> We can't fudge anything or fake anything. Every now and then in my edited videos, I'll leave something if it's funny. But for the most part, it just takes up too much time to leave all of that in an edited video. So I, I just cut it out. All the oops and the mess ups and things get, get removed. Hello, Jen's Upcycle from Maryland. And can you make Christmas or Halloween cut out? Are we ready for Christmas and Halloween? Well, we probably will venture into that. We we will. I ordered. We've got some, some things in the works. So. I ordered Christmas pajama pants for the website, so I feel like if that you know if I can order Christmas pajama pants, then we could probably start making cutouts. Probably by midsummer. That way, for all the crafters and people who want to get the stuff, we'll have it out and available. Yeah. We'll we'll start doing production. I gotta. As always, I gotta get this farmhouse, this farmhouse that we're working on finished. That's taking farmhouse all my time. Farmhouse is the F word around here <laughs> like anytime we can't do something that's the word we use okay it's because of the farmhouse i'm trying to get paint in all the cracks and crosses. i should i do white or should i do a different you know what Whatever i'm gonna want. i'm gonna go i'm gonna be right back i'm gonna grab a couple brushes i'm just gonna hit a little mermaid tail and then i'm gonna all right. it and do, do you want to show them up close or with the camera here i'm or... gonna i'm gonna so let they can kind of see what i'm doing here you... Oh, I'm using a canvas scroll in Classic Elements. Sorry, I said it wrong. That's why we have Caitlin here. A canvas scroll in Classic Elements, and she's probably linked with them. Oh, heaven help me. Paint it right there and they can see. Okay, you guys can see that. So I'm just brushing it on, and then I'm just doing a just stippling motion. Just don't get paint on your shirt because you got it all on that edge. Yeah, there's already paint on my shirt. It'll come off. It's fine. So what happens when you're short and you have to push up against the table? I'm just trying to push the paint in all the spots because you have, it's still, where did you move my paint to? 
feel very, very pliable at this point. The, the molds are not dry in any way, shape, or form. So that, that makes this always a little awkward to paint. Oops, I can't see what I'm doing. I'm using beadboard, which I feel like beadboard is like a bluish white, but some people say it's a grayish white. If you use beadboard, what color do you think it is? Let me know. I'm always curious. I feel like people see different shades differently. Trying to make sure I don't have any. Don't forget to do the top. I won't. I'm just doing this top part here. You might want to right here. You've got like a lip. Yeah, I'll do that when I flip it up. Okay. There we go. Now I can see that. I'll put some paint in there. And then, so I use the the paint to kind of backfill it. I need you to scooch. So I'm showing them something. They can still I'm see. Showing them something. They can still see. All right. So I'm just scooping the paint off the brush and then like kind of putting it in the hole. If you have like a little um detail brush that's perfect for smooshing paint that's why i love to do diy paint with these because i feel like it all the clay kind of hides all the imperfections of my situation here i counted it in my last video i said situation five times somebody said i said i think it was many. four maybe it's four it times four times they said that was too much for one video i feel like it's you funny. did say it twice quick maybe yeah, that's why maybe I'm going to just use this little artist brush though. Sorry, I know you guys can't see what you're doing, but I, I'm doing, I also have to see what I'm doing for just a second and then I'll, I'll swap it around so you guys can look at the pretty side. It's okay. I think I already dropped one on your foot today. You did. All right. So mermaid tail just dabbed it on there. Just, it's going to be like an undercoat two tone color. Oh, that's really close. <laughs> Let me show you real close. Show them how all the details okay now i'm gonna put the i'm gonna heat gun it and then i'm gonna put the right. beadboard this little on it. artist brush is working great is that winning yeah just to shove it down in all the little teeny tiny cracks like i said if it was all the way dry wouldn't be an issue but the balls are wet okay oh goodness now i gotta flip this around you guys whoa now it's got a crease in it. Hold on. <laughs> Just don't worry about getting paint on your hands and flip it. <laughs> there we go. It's good. It's good. It's got a little authentic battle damage. Can you they see yours while I'm doing this? I don't, I'm afraid to move it or it's going to follow them. Sorry, guys. I don't mean to cover his up. I'll move mine in a second. No, they can see. I'm okay. just back here in the back. I'm just, I'm just heat gunning it. right now. And when I totally I'm... mush part of my mold. When I put the white on, it'll, it'll look good. And I'm definitely going to paint the back of this because it's messy. This one's going to be one of a kind it. because we don't get any more pieces like this. Which oh, is yeah. the slope. They all have That's the scallop. That's the only junk like, the only junk ends like that. I miss thrifting. I, I miss thrifting too. I miss thrifting too. So we might, I might put my shield on and my plastic gloves because I have a bunch of junk I need to get rid of. It's not really junk, but like clothes from the kids. They all clean their closets out. I was like, we're moving soon. You got to get through your stuff. All right. All right. Can okay. you, here. Let me just flop this on its back. Be for mine, but don't, don't mush my details. Oh, you don't want me to mess it up like I did mine? I'm just going to show them close. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna heat gun this in a second. Somebody said they're salt washing a pair of chairs and her daughter said that it looked like a clown threw up on it. I can do you one better. Somebody said one of my pieces looked like clown tears. I'm not really sure what clown tears are, but apparently that was my dresser. So you can see the salt wash a little bit better now. I'm gonna dry this and we'll get it distressed before we're done here. And you'll be able to see how all of these textures and things come out. It looks good even though I dropped it right in the middle. Sometimes old pediments have broken parts, so I'm gonna go with that. Did I make it? Did I really make a mess up? Uh, well, this was like pushed up. There we go. Well, I'm also going to once you dry that, we'll clear wax it. I'm also gonna catch your lip of paint. And then I will put some decrepit dust down in there. There we go. Um, Anna said one of her thrift stores opened yesterday. She feels like she won the lottery. Yeah. 
hopefully they've got lots of good stuff because everybody's been spring cleaning while they've been at home. Some stores have been still collecting stuff and then just letting it sit before they put it out so they have lots of good stuff. That's what we do. When I get stuff, I just let it sit on the back porch. If you ever come to my shop and it looks like an episode of Hoarders on the back porch, it's because I'm being responsible and letting the uh, stuff sit out before I bring it inside. I might even get a little crackle with this heat gun. Kevin says, these are gorgeous. I hope so. Yeah, if you've been with us from the start, it's finally starting to come together and look like something. If you've been with us from the start, you're very, very patient. Because we've been almost an hour now. Well, I've seen many live videos, but they don't even get close to finished after an hour, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. We've, we've done those live videos. If I, what I'll do with the rest of these is I'm going to assembly line them. I'll lay them all out, put the base coat, then do the mold, then go do something else, come back. Debbie says, just popped on what you're doing. We're making pediments with old scrap wood. Oh, sorry. I told you I wasn't going to do that. And then I did it. These are just fake architectural detail. So they're leftover CNC cutouts that had damage or didn't cut out good. Dad had a pile of them. Every Wednesday, when I don't have a plan, I just go out in the garage and stare at all the junk we have until something says, hey, pick me, pick me, pick me. I want a makeover. I try to go on Pinterest, but then I just am like, yeah, that's already been done. And I like to figure out what to do with the junk I have rather than come and buy new stuff. Necessity is the mother of all invention. Right? These little great details up on the top actually turned out really cool. All right. And like I said, we are going to paint the backs of these. So if you're watching and you're very disturbed by the fact that they're unfinished. We'll, we'll paint them. We will paint them. Just not painting them while we're live. Because we don't know what the end user is going to do. They might sit somewhere like out visible. in the open where it's visible. Yeah, if they were sitting on a piece of furniture, then you'd be able to see them. If they hung them on the wall, then you wouldn't. But we don't know what they're doing. It would be so cute as a necklace hanger. That would be cute. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, my hands are very painted. So they're pretty long. I'd say they're about 26 inches long, right around there. You want to grab a measuring tape while you're over there? Um, we'll see how long they actually are. Maybe 24, maybe 20, I'm guessing 24 inches. No, I'm sticking with 26. Okay, I think this is dry enough for wet distressing. Okay. And then I've got the clear wax and the decrepit dust. I will get a, I'm just gonna use a paper towel because it's closer. All right, so salt wash on there nice and thick. Dreaming Cat Studio, yeah, 24. I'll wait to measure. How long do you think these are? Just for fun. All right. <laughs> I'm back. I now have a oh, people are saying hooks would be really cool on these. Yeah, like little. I think we'll probably sell them the way that they are. That way the end user can choose whether they turn it into something that hangs on the wall or sits on the top of a bookshelf or you put hooks on. I like to kind of give people the option. So I'm just taking a damp paper towel and I'm rubbing back that salt wash detail. Where's and the, can you, this is still good. Can you put this in? Yes. And bring out, oh, super chat, vintage vibes. Thank, Thank you. you for keeping us inspired during isolation. We look forward to seeing more work on the farmhouse. We're, we'll have a farmhouse video. It'll probably be Friday because um, we've got the other video tomorrow with the Stay at Home Shopping Network. But I've been working on the farmhouse all week and we're, we're getting close. We're getting close to that inspection. I just have to do the gas line and, uh, and, and uh, you're probably tired of hearing it, uh, it but a couple of electrical things. Electrical? <laughs> Electrical's not really Zeb's. Like he likes framing and stuff so I feel like that's one of the things that it's not, you know, it's, I'm, I'm fairly proficient at it, but the roughing has been, there's a couple things that I'm not used to doing. It's a little different than just wiring up a light or a socket or a switch. I'm bringing 
the block out in case you're wondering what I'm doing. So I'm just trying to make sure it's right. That way when the inspector comes, he's like, okay, you're done. Put the ship lap on. Yeah. I feel like when you do a good job from the beginning, then they trust you more in the long run. So you just gotta be... Yeah, I don't want to give him... I don't want to give him a reason to like go over my stuff with a fine tooth comb. I'm hoping they'll look at like a couple outlets and be like, yeah, you did that right. All right, you're good to go. <laughs> Dreaming Cat Studio says she's a little worried we're not busy enough, right? <laughs> a little worried, yeah. All right, so I'm just drying this off now. Mm -hmm. I might need you to heat down this a little bit. I would be able to do a better job of wet distressing this if it was all the way done, but it's okay. I might come back even after I wax it and uh, decrepit adjust it, and then I'll hit it with some sandpaper. Can I do that? Sorry, I just need to. You need a little more heat? Yeah, I just painted a little section and then I wet distressed it so there's just water puddling. I'll inside. show them this one, it's almost dry. Okay. So, like I said, I'll come back after it's all the way dry tomorrow and sand it, at, even after I've uh, done the wax and the decrepit dust and bring out more of the color. I'm just afraid to do it right now because I don't want to. This one, this one has so many molds on it. All right. So to kind of give you some inspiration on what you can use this on, I have a piece of furniture back here that doesn't have a ton of detail on the top. And you might even cut some of these down to fit on this and just do it because it could be cool. Because we haven't gotten to this clock yet. All right, so there's that clock from a couple Saturdays ago. And imagine this shorter to fit, but look how cool something like that would be just right there up on the front of it. I can't tell, is that centered? I'm not looking at it straight on. Yeah, yeah it is, it looks cool. Oh, they can't even see the whole thing. But you see, if you, if you cut these wings off and maybe slope it down, you know, get your jigsaw out, how cool is that just sitting up there or even on like the top of a door or something? I'm just putting clear wax on this so I can put some decrepit dust. Oh, you know what would be cool is to put these on top of like a window that we do like an IOD transfer on or something. Yeah, that would be cool. The wax is melting because it's hot from the heat. It's hot from the heat. That's okay because it's getting on all the cracks. All right, so the decrepit dust is now going to be sprinkled on here. I'll have Zeb put angle that down. So you can see the wax is still melty. You should not do it this close together. Can you give me a dry brush so I can work this in? You need the a dry decrepit brush? dust goes a long way. This may actually have dust from the floor because this fell the other day and I was like, no. You're in luck. We have a stencil brush that is not dirty. Oh, that's gonna dirty. be perfect to work this dust down in there. Okay, so. Here, I'm, we're gonna go flying. See all the mess? This is the mayhem after video. This was clean when we started. Yeah, you know. Oh, look at that. It's not gonna you, stay like that. You made time. such a mess. You ruined it. Oh no. <laughs> I'm teasing, she didn't ruin it. It's fine. It's just getting down in all the detail. Then can you actually um, see if Eliza will bring me a clean rag from under the kitchen sink? Well, we had that orange one. Where'd you go with it? I have no idea. Plus I don't it's, know what's on it. It's over there. It's just, it doesn't have anything on it. This would be so much easier if this was dry. The wax? <laughs> yeah, clay. Oh, the clay? Next time, Zeb, I'm going to come up with the idea ahead of time and I'm going to have one pre-made so that way I don't have to be all wonky when I do it. It's okay. It makes for a unique experience when things are not completely dry because I'm just pushing very, very lightly. Do you want it to be wet? What? No. Just right. I'm just pulling. Actually, you know what would be better? Where's the buffing brush? Oh. That, that can get down in all the cracks and the details, and then I can use that to, to wipe off the high spots. You could just use dark wax, too. The dust is just a little bit more, I don't know, dusty. It's, it's so it's wet, softer. though. We're going to have to wash this buff brush when we're done. Okay. And you can also come back with it 
and do like white wax over the top to lighten it up. But this makes all those little details pop. And again, you would want to do this when it's dry so you can really give it some elbow grease, which I cannot do right now because my molds are wet and pliable. Okay. Dust from the floor, somebody's laughing at me. All right, where's that rag? Is that dry? Oh, I was like... gonna use it to wet distress mine. Oh. Here, let me wet distress this first. Okay, well, I gotta, I gotta go quick or else I'm gonna okay, get go. this off, sorry. I'll go get, I'll go use this. All right, this, so this is uh, slightly damp, so I'm just pulling it off the high spots. You guys will be able to see this in a second. If you were worried that it was gonna be too crusty, this is really gonna help. Again, if you guys don't like the wax, skip the step. But that's what makes it look old, is the wax. Like, the wax, the detail, the salt wash. You're trying to mimic handmade stuff that's super old. I'll show you guys. Can you see that? That's where I'm going with this. All right, I'm getting there. So I'm just pulling back this, and you want to pull it back, like, right away. Because if you wait too long, it's not coming off. I also use the clear wax to give it a little bit of resist. And the dust has to have something to stick to. Let's see if I can hold this here and show you if some of that mermaid tail comes back through. The thing about faux finishes, I feel like, is the more steps you have, the better it looks, right? Like, just keep adding it on there and layering to mimic natural wear. Lisa says, I do like that, Jamie. I never expect to like the dust and then end up liking it after all. It's really necessary when you're doing stuff like this to get the dust, to get the dark wax out and really go to town. Otherwise, all those details you put in are lost. And it's not like for not, like let's say this is too dark, right? You let it dry completely, throw some white wax on it. Like you can keep working with it and you're not supposed to paint over wax but I have totally done that like on a decorative piece where you're not worried about if it peels a little bit because you want texture. I've totally painted over it to make it lighter before. You can, you can do a lot of things. You can manipulate it to get what you want. So this is, uh, I'm, I'm going to sand a little bit because it's not coming off with that paper towel. Okay, do you want this? That, is, that will make a difference. Oh. Okay, I'm going to slowly. Let's spread some black around. Oh. I'm going to slowly move this across so that way you guys can see the detail. And it's even okay where it got mushed in the middle because it just makes it look more authentic. So that's my piece. And if you've ever seen old hand carved stuff or plastered stuff, it looks very much like this. Let me show you the original so that way if you're just tuning in, you can fully appreciate that we took I'm trying not to drop it. We took two of these leftover pieces in the garage, turned it into that. And really the options are endless with the molds. You can create all kinds of different patterns. You could make it fun and use the mermaids if you wanted something coastal or the birds. And if you let this dry completely, you could really put that salt wash texture over the molds even and give it even more of a crusty aged look. And once I do the back on this, if somebody saw this sitting somewhere, I seriously don't think that they would think that this was new. They think it was old. So that's what we do. We take junk and we make it look like old junk. There we go. All right, you want to sprinkle this one so we can get it finished yeah. real quick? Okay, we'll so if you're just tuning in, you can buy the products we use at jamierayvintage.com or at our store in Lehigh. And if you're interested in purchasing these, they're going to be at our Stay at Home Shopping Network which is Thursdays at four o'clock on YouTube and Facebook this Thursday, but starting next week, it'll be on Facebook only. And we'll make sure to announce it in all the places too, yeah, so you can we'll find it. Yeah, we'll drop stuff. All right, so you didn't clear wax again, did you? Yes, it's clear waxed. Oh. I just didn't go as heavy as I missed that. So and Jamie's we, just sprinkling on if you can. We should have know. maybe, we can probably do about half a dozen of these by tomorrow. So that way you've yeah, got some I options. I think I have them. enough to do. So I made up four. I think there's enough to do. Well, did we have more pieces at home or did you bring all your pieces? 
So I think we can have seven total, maybe eight. Oh, okay. And then I'm also going to sand, I'll, I'll fix that, I'll sand it down. It doesn't look good when you sand it on the corbels because you can see the gap. Um, the cost on these, they're probably gonna be, I need to check how much it's gonna cost to ship them because they're kind of long. Um, but they're probably going to be between $25 and $30, it would be my guesstimate on a price. And you can see how this one's kind of irregular, but we're going to go with that. You see how this right here got really thin compared to that right there? But once together, I think it's okay. And I'll just dremel that little lip on the top, and we'll paint it and salt wash it. And this one, I don't think we'll add any mold detail. We'll just do it because that's cool. Yeah, that, well, you can put a back on it, yeah. Yeah, this is just the sides of the corbel, and I've been trying to make a cutout that was just these for a while and just haven't gotten around to it, you know. Right. I got lots of free time right now. That's why instead of making you make new stuff, I try to figure out what to do with all your scraps because I'm like, well, he's not going to have time to do it, so I'll figure out something good to do with this. That's kind of how all of our chartreuse boards came about because we had all those leftover ends from the farmhouse. Now we actually are buying wood until we get more joists. But well, the, the joists are different. They won't. They yeah, we have won't so work. many extra pieces for the of wood floor. at the farmhouse. We have a pile waiting for me to come up with projects. And like I said, I'll come back when these are completely dry and sand it a little bit and then do some more waxing to bring out some of those colors. So this one is just, I just mermaid tailed this one. This one doesn't have any molds on it yet. And I think even if you just salt washed it, it would be cool without any molds. It would look good. Okay, I'm hurrying. I was well, Pam said something funny and I couldn't find it. So oh, sorry. That's your job. My job? You gotta find what Pam said. Pam, what did you say that was funny? There were lots of laughing emojis and I was like, what did Pam say? Okay. I have a lot of dust around here and it's pretty decrepit. Can I use that? LOL. Well, I'm telling you, there's <laughs> shopped floor dust in this because I wasn't about to let this thing go to waste. And you guys, this is like the first one I've ever opened. You know how many projects I've done for this? It takes very little dust. Vintage vibes, the blue color. So this is mermaid tail. I had, I didn't wash my brush out good enough. And so the lighter shade, there's a little bit of beadboard in there from not washing my brush out. It, blend, it blended in. So mermaid tail. From DIY. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna finish this. I up. also used this in my barn color by number yesterday for channel Oh, members. that's right. The, be the mermaid tail. Oh, this looks cool with the mermaid tail coming through. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's kind of, the mermaid tail is, it's bright, but it's kind of, you, I feel like I've seen like entire kitchens done in it in old homes. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. It's like that old bright turquoise. Like the, all the cabinets are like a bright turquoisey blue. I think it also helped that we stippled the paint because that gave us extra texture with the salt wash. Well, I love me some DIY clay paint. All right, I think this one, I might come back through and dry brush it a little. Pam, Pam says she's, she's going to be the guinea pig on the dust. <laughs> okay, you let us know how your actual decrepit works. It's actually decrepit from your house. Oh, I, this needs more. Pull it back. So just some IOD molds. We did that at the first of the video. You see they're a mess right now. All right, so here's subs. I think this one's going to need more distressing, but I'll wait till it dries. So there you go. Antique pediments made from leftover scraps and some DIY plies. Make sure you guys, if you like this video, click the share button. It'll copy a link and you can post it on your Facebook page or text your friends. It helps us out a ton. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment with any questions that you have. Hit up the websites, Jamie Ray Vintage and jamierayvintagehome.com. And give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY and junk and stuff. Thanks, guys. It was really fun. Um, have a great day. Don't lick anybody because of the situation. And uh, have fun. Last question. Stacy has a question. What do you use to seal metal toolboxes when you paint them with DIY? Big top. Big top. Big top. All right, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. One of my favorite videos tomorrow, showing you all the junk. Pam sent a link. Oh, we do have gift cards for Mother's Day. She, Pam sent a link to her uh, son's girlfriend that she wants a gift card. <laughs> that's smart, Pam. That's, that's using the old noggin. Nice. Love you guys.